Thank you for tuning in to the Witcher Math Channel. Here's something that came up in class the other day, and it's something we've all learned at one time or another. And it kind of pops up at random through our math careers. It's called a box plot, sometimes called a box and whisker plot, because it kind of looks like a box with whiskers on it. And I just want to do a quick lesson here on uh, reminding you how to make a box plot. Okay, a box plot is just a way of analyzing a set of data. It's in a statistics and probability standard cluster area for us. So with any set of numbers, to really analyze the center and spread, which you might know mean, median, and mode, and those kind of things, this is another way of analyzing a set of numbers. Okay, so first we need to put in order from smallest to largest. Okay. So, just going to start with the little ones and cross them off as we go. There's a 3, 4, 4, 4. As you can imagine, the most common mistake people make on these problems, and they come up on standardized tests a lot, is not getting the series accurate, like leaving a number out or something. Okay. So when you're done crossing them off and you think they're all in order, count them, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We started with 11. Do I still have 11? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. That's the most common mistake is to have the same number of things in the list that you started with. Once you put them in order, now we need a number line. The number line needs to, like any graph, capture all of the data in the set. So in this case, I'm just going to make it go from 3 to 13, 10, 11, 12, 13, just a quick and dirty number line that goes from 3 to 13. Now what we do is we find, yeah, there's a practice problem down there if you uh, want to skip ahead, but we'll get there soon enough. First we find the median, which is the number in the middle. Okay, that's why we need to put them in order. Since we have 11 numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the sixth number evenly splits the set. Okay, so I have five numbers on each side. So 6 is the median, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we put a little bar right there. Okay, median. Next, we take the uh, median of the lower half of this data set in this case is 4, and we put a bar there. And by the way, 4 is called the first quartile. Might as well get the vocab down. Okay. Next, we find the median of the upper half of the set of data, in this case 9, the number in the middle out of those numbers that are left. 7, 8, 9. Put a little bar over the number line there. I'm going to label it. And by the way, that is called the third quartile. Good. We're almost done. Then we need the minimum. You could predict that means the lowest number in the entire set. And we put a dot there. That's where things change. Put a dot. And the maximum. We put a dot over the number line, in this case at 13. We take these three bars make a box out of them. We attach the dots to the box. That's why it's sometimes called a box and whisker plot. It kind of looks like that. For us, it's called a box plot. We've labeled everything. We've labeled the five numbers, and that's what leads us to what's called a five number summary. And if you label a box plot while you're making it, your five number summary is all served up and ready to go. In order from left to right, you've got the minimum, you've got the first quartile, three and four in this case. We've got the median, also known as the second quartile. That's just a fun fact here. Usually we call it the median. Then we're gonna have the third quartile which for this problem was nine, and the maximum. That's your five number summary of a box plot. 
There we go. Zoom in a little bit. Bam. Five number summary. Box plot. Beautiful. Now we just need to uh, practice. We'll have you do one. So copy down this set of numbers, put it in order, make a box plot, and a five number summary. Go. Okay, I hope you're back. Let's check your work. First, we're going to put these in order from smallest to largest. First of all, how many numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 numbers. Let's make sure we have 12 after we organize the list. So two 13s, 17. Wake up, wake up. Okay, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We still have 12. We're good. Let's find the median. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Since the median would be right here, we're going to take two numbers and find their average. Okay? Whenever your median has two numbers, you split the difference. Add them up, divide by two, however you want to think of that. Hey, my number line is going to go from... Uh, Wow, I better count by fives here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay, that's not the most beautiful number line. Sorry about that. It's still going to work, though, so don't worry. The median is 23, so I'm going to... Put a bar right about there. Then, since these numbers are all taken, I'm going to take the median of the lower half, which is the first quartile, which is 13 in this case. Bam, 13, 23. Median of the upper half, which is also called the right third quartile, that's 30. Let's make the box. Then what do we need? Right. The minimum of four with a dot. Connect to that whisker there. Then we need the maximum, 33, with another dot. And then our five number summary. If I can zoom out and get a little bit of room in the corner down here. Five number summary. From smallest to largest, we've got the minimum, 4, first quartile, 13, median or second quartile, 23, that's a 3, um, third quartile is 30, whoopsie, forgot to label that, and the maximum is 33, and hey, we're done. On another video, I'm going to show you how to make parallel box plots so we can compare two sets of data. But you can't do that unless you can do this. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.